In this project we're going to take a look at some lens corrections. Okay, I'm in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to come over to the Lens Correction panel. Okay, we'll start with the profile. I'm going to click on the Enable Lens Profile Corrections and this picks up the Nikon lens. Uh, it's a 12-24 uh, lens on this crop sensor uh, camera that we've been using. Okay, that'll make sure that there's no ban barrel distortion or pin cushion distortion. And also uh, we'll correct some uh, vignetting issues that the lens might have. We can then proceed to the color tab and choose the remove chromatic aberration checkbox. This is very important when we're using wide angle lenses as the um, uh, chromatic aberration is often quite significant in the corner of the images at high contrast edges. Let's just, uh, we'll zoom in on the corner so you can see perhaps um, this is the obviously with the chromatic aberration checked but if we uncheck that uh, remove chromatic aberration you'll see this uh, dark uh, purple or blue line coming down this edge near now. So removing chromatic aberration always recommended when using wide angle lenses. I'll just fit in view command 0 on a Mac or control 0 on a PC. And we're now going to come up to the manual tab. Now this is a, a feature called upright. Now it gets it right most of the time but occasionally it uh, will make mistakes. I'm just going to zero out uh, some of the controls that I've got running here. Okay, and, uh, and then we'll click on the A uh, in order to see what Photoshop makes of this image. Now because there's so many unusual angles inside of this image, uh, the upright has actually uh, failed to work in this instance. It gets it right most of the time, but this is one of those instances where we're going to need to come in and do some manual corrections. Okay, so I'm going to come in uh, with the, uh, the vertical slider here. And in order to see when we've got um, uh, alignment, I'm going to click on the show grid. Okay, and as we can see, these verticals are leaning out. And so I'm just going to uh, grab that vertical slider and we can pull it in either direction in order to align those verticals uh, with the grid that we can see there. Just pulling it a little bit more and we're about right at uh, plus 15 or so. Okay, we also have the, the option if uh, the image is slightly crooked uh, is to uh, rotate the image um, using the rotate here. Okay, now also when we're scaling some of these images and correcting converging verticals, I'll just double click to zero that, is we can make images that look uh, slightly squat um, uh, or too uh, squashed in appearance. And we have this um, aspect ratio now where we can make the image either fatter or slightly taller. I'm going to give it a slightly plus value here in order to return the normal appearance of the height of these structures here. Okay, and uh, now that I've finished with the grid, I'm just going to uh, click off that show grid. Now we've got this transparency that's appearing around uh, the image as it's been corrected. And uh, we could scale that out. Alternatively, we can crop in. Now if we're using the crop tool and we want to crop away that transparency, we need to check the constraint to image option here, which is already checked for me here. Okay, and then it's a simple matter of coming in, clicking and dragging in order to make a selection. It doesn't really matter if I make uh, some selection of that transparency area because it'll snap back down to the image area as you can see there. Okay, I'm just going to pull that in slightly uh, and uh, so that I can select the bottom of the image there. And I'm going to crop in a little bit more at the top just for a more pleasing composition there and uh, then I'll click on the handle zoom tool in order to apply that crop and as we can see now we've uh, made some uh, significant improvements uh, using the lens corrections panel. I'm just going to open this as an object here I've got the open object button selected hold down the shift key if your uh, button is saying open image or uh, make a modification in the workflow options by checking the open in Photoshop as smart objects which is the way we can work completely non-destructively. Okay, so I'll select OK and then I'll choose the Open Object button which will take this into the main editing space of uh, Photoshop. I'll just uh, zoom in to fit on screen there. If we want our horizontals and verticals to be absolutely straight then we should try coming up to the Filter menu and choosing the Adaptive Wide Angle Filter. Now I'm just going to zoom out, that's Command minus or Control minus on a PC just so we can see some more of the canvas area and I'm also going to use the scale button just so we can see uh, the perimeters of this image. 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and make some corrections. I'm going to use the tool in the top left hand corner called the Constraint tool. I've clicked to check that. And then we're going to place a, a, a cursor on an area which uh, will have a straight uh, horizontal line. Now we're going to use this detail tab to help us find the precise points. So I'm just going to come over and using that detail tab I've located the top left hand corner and then I'm dragging over to the corresponding point on the right side. If I hold down the shift key this will constrain this to an absolute horizontal and then just uh, letting go of the mouse button that will straighten that out. I'm just going to extend these points. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then pull those out to the outside of the image area. Okay, This will ensure that the image is straightened all the way to the canvas area. We're going to do the same in the uh, um, bottom corner here. Again finding a, a point on that uh, lower vertical there and then pulling around to the corresponding point on the right side of the image. Again holding down the shift key will constrain that to an absolute horizontal. Again holding down the shift key as we extend those to the corners of the canvas area. And now we have those um, horizontals uh, corrected. We can also continue to add horizontals because at the moment the corrections are starting to pull away as we move outside of those areas. So I'm going to add uh, another line okay, up to the top uh, of, the, of this image. Okay and also one down in the lower portion of that image like so. Okay so that's fully corrected now we'll turn our attention onto the verticals. Okay I'm going to again use that detail tab to try and find um, the edge of that line and then click and drag down uh, onto that edge uh, in the lower portion. Okay again using the detail tab to hold find alignment holding down the shift key for a perfect vertical and uh, that makes that straight. Again holding down the shift key we can extend those to the uh, canvas uh, edge of the canvas in both directions top and bottom like so and we'll add one now on the right hand side again using that detail tab to find alignment holding down the shift key for perfect verticals and just a little bit over onto the right and then let go of the mouse button okay holding down the shift key still and we extend those to the edge of the canvas. And uh, we can now add uh, a few more verticals onto the sides of the images. Uh, so we have correction all the way to the edge of the canvas there. Okay, now we have full correction. And the way to get rid of the transparency is now just to scale up like so. If at any time we don't want absolute verticals we can just click on any of these corresponding lines and then if you move your uh, cursor over the pin we can see that we can actually angle that in. Uh, I'll just drag it slightly uh, for a, a one degree lean in and also on the corresponding um, side on the other side we'll just lean that in uh, approximately one degree for a match on the other side. Okay, because sometimes images look a little bit better if we have a small amount of converging verticals. And again, we've got a little bit of transparency creeping in, so I'll just uh, um, scale that up by another percent or so. Okay, and uh, now we can select OK. Um, this adaptive wide angle, uh, because we open the image as a smart object, will be applied as a smart filter. So if we go on to go back in and make any corrections at any time in the future, it's just a simple matter of just double clicking the adaptive wide angle option and in we go and we can perfect some of those angles if we want to. And I'll just cancel that out. Okay, so quite quickly we can see we can make some very quick uh, and rough adjustments inside of the Adobe Camera Raw space and we can also make some very precise adjustments inside of the main editing space of Photoshop using the adaptive wide angle filter.